is Emma Anglin, and we have been reading from my book, Dragon Smith. We're on chapter 13. In our last chapter, chapter 12, Seven went through the forest, and he found some of the lambs that belonged to Taryn Hall. And with that, let's get into chapter 13. Desimone reclined in her mother's throne, a silver chair upholstered with blue fabric. Next to it sat her father's throne, a gold chair upholstered in royal purple. On her other side stood Maria. From her position on the dais, surrounded by the five best knights in her kingdom, capable men sworn an oath to protect her realm, she felt as if she could accomplish anything. The good knight Galloway and Lord Minister of Lawfolk Gerendon. A herald bowed at the door and stepped aside, allowing the two men to step in. Sir Galloway, I'm glad the minister found you. Desimone tilted her head the way her mother did when she wanted to look engaging. Your counsel in this matter will be most welcome. What matter is that, my princess? Galloway bowed before her. I'll be most honored to lend you my thoughts. I wish to discuss what is to be done about the dragon plaguing my lands. Desimone sat tall in the throne, the epitome of a lady in charge. Your Highness, the good minister has already informed you of my plans with the dragon. Galloway forward his brows. I have the matter well in hand. I understand, good knight, but what if the trap fails? I feel it prudent for us to discuss contingencies in case your tactics fall through. Desmond looked at each of her knights in turn. You must understand, I wish for the dragon to be dispatched before any further harm comes to our people. Failure in this matter will not be tolerated. All of you must work together to rid our lands of this beast. Galloway's mouth clamped shut, his lips set in a thin line. His face reddened to a shade of plum. On the other hand, Garadin covered his mouth with a hand to hide a chuckle. Desimone felt her cheeks flare. I see Sir Galloway and the minister are sharing a jest the rest of us are not privy to. Pray, good sir, what is so funny about my desire to keep my land and people safe? Forgive me, your highness. Garandon let his hand drop. I was merely laughing at the irony of the situation. Believe it or not, Sir Galloway and I were speaking of this very topic not moments before. That you should desire all your knights to work together to solve this problem is most forward thinking of you. His voice wavered as he spoke, almost as if he were holding back laughter. Desimone narrowed her eyes at him. The minister is indeed correct. Galloway bowed to her with more flourish than she thought was necessary. He and I discussed the role your knights would take, should we have to face the dragon head on. I would be most honored to give my counsel on this matter, my lady, but please leave it in our hands. Desmond blinked, raising her chin a bit. Was he trying to dismiss her? I should like to hear what it is you are... Desimone, Garandon laid a hand on her shoulder. Perhaps it's best to leave it to the knights. This is an issue demanding royal attention, minister. Desimone turned to glare at him. Am I not a part of the royal family? Garandon leaned in close to whisper in her ear. It is a matter which should not be discussed in the presence of a lady. He is right, princess, Maria said in her other ear. Desimone clenched her teeth as her face heated. How convenient being a lady precluded her from making all the important decisions. She bit her lips together. If she didn't, she would have ranted and raved and shouted of all of what she thought about such a rule. But instead, she pushed her feelings down. As a lady, she had to remain calm at all times. So instead, she took a deep breath, rose from her seat, and crossed the room to the window overlooking the orchard, out of hearing of the knights and their planning. A breeze picked up and played through the trees. The swaying branches and the roar of the rustling leaves soothed her nerves and took her back to the time she loved more than any other, when a boy stood up to her nurse and presented her with an apple from atop the furthest branch of the tallest tree. A smile formed on her mouth as she thought of the boy with the wild hair scaling the trees as if he had claws for hands. Though knights and princes had visited her land seeking her hand, she had not witnessed a feat of strength and dexterity which had so impressed her since. Thinking of Sir Apple? Maria said in a low voice so as not to be overheard. How did you know? You always have this look on your face when you do. Maria turned to the window. I do, huh? Desimone let a smile cross her lips. It was her most precious memory after all. Princess? Garadin approached her. Desimone stood straight, her smile fading. Minister, she said when he stopped in front of her. I do not see the point of my father leaving me to rule in his absence if I cannot sit in on these types of counsel. You allow my influence on all matters pertaining to the household, ruling the people, economic and financial matters, yet I am not allowed to discuss how best to protect my people? Matters of war and conflict are not meant for a lady's ears, 
Not while a man is there to protect her. Desmond clenched her fist. Minister, no need to vex yourself, my lady. Gerardin held up his hand. Even your mother does not sit in on these types of counsel. What you need is a husband. Back to that again. Desmond turned her attention to the window. It is not only I and your parents who wish to see you happy, dear princess. Gerardin motioned with his hand. The whole kingdom is awaiting the prince. Do not let your father be sorry he decided to let you decide your fate in this matter. It is a decision I am taking most seriously, minister. Desimone took a deep breath. I want to ensure I choose the right man, but I haven't found the correct suitor. No one I have met is right. My people mean more to me than anything else. I cannot afford to make a bad decision in this matter. Not only would it be detrimental to my life, but to theirs as well. What about Sir Galloway? Maria spoke up. Desmond gave her a sharp look. What about him? He is a brilliant and noble knight. Maria turned to face the circle of knights, where, Desmond noted, Galloway led the conversation. She is correct, your highness, Garandon continued. Since he arrived, all the knights have looked to him for wisdom. He has done nothing but perform feats of amazing courage and skill since he first arrived. Desmond rolled her eyes, all to attain more fame for himself. Or as a means of impressing you, Gerardin leaned closer to her. He's made it no secret he wishes your hand, princess. He would take good care of you and this kingdom. Galloway is certainly a man to be admired, but I can't get over the feeling something's missing. Desimo sighed. I wish I knew what it is I'm searching for. Gerardin turned her head to face Galloway. Perhaps what you're seeking is right in front of you. Perhaps. Desmond studied the knights for a moment, her eyes lingering on Galloway. A handsome, charismatic character, with a chiseled jawline and muscles to match, he had all the knights, even the older ones, deferring to him. His leadership qualities were obvious to all. Maybe she was being too choosy. Shaking her head, she tore her eyes away from Galloway. Excuse me, minister, I have to see to luncheon. Of course, Garandon lowered his voice. I will surely come to brief you on what was discussed in this council, my lady. You won't be entirely out of the loop. Thank you, minister. Desmond walked out of the throne room, but not before taking one more look at Galloway and his cluster of knights. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe and click the notification bell and leave a comment. It really helps the algorithm. Uh, if you'd like to pick up the books, the link to them will be in the description. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you next time for Chapter 14. Bye!